guys, I'm Maria and in today's Wheels project I'm going to show you how to build a volume and presence sensor to create, manage and monitor insights from Ubidots. In this video tutorial I'm going to be using a ESP32 dev kit connected with a Maxbotix ultrasonic sensor. If you already don't know about Maxbotix just let me tell you that they have been improving in the ultrasonic sensor industry for the last 10 years by designing affordable sensors to intelligently increase the quality and value of their application. If you want to learn more about Maxbotics, you can reach out to them by following the link in the description below. Now, it's time to start building amazing stuff together. My initial recommendation for all of those who want to start working with UDOTs and IoT is to check out the UDOTs Help Center, where you can find all the resources that you're going to need to build your own IoT solution. For this video tutorial, I'm going to be covering how to build your own industrial volume and presence reader sensor using a Maxbotics ultrasonic sensor connected to a ESP32. It's important to mention that Maxbotics have a various number of sensors for different kind of applications. So if you want to learn more about their lineup, go and reach out to them by their website. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how I build a volume tank reader application. So basically the requirements for this application are an MB7389 ultrasonic sensor from Maxbotics, which is the one specified by them for volume tank reader application, an ESP32 as microcontroller, and an UDOTS account to manage, monitor, and analyze all the data. Basically, the first step is establish the connection between your sensor and your microcontroller. Here you can find a table which specifies the pinout of the board and of the sensor and also you can follow this diagram in order to avoid any further issues in the connection. Depending on the stage of your product, uh, if you are in the proof of cup set testing stage or if you're going to deploy this sensor in an industrial environment, you have to, to be sure to enclose the hardware in a proper weather casing. As a reference, you can take a look of these images just to check a viable liquid resistant casing. Also, it's important to mention that there are many important factors that you have to consider before mounting this sensor in a tank, like the position of the sensor, which is the most important for this application because this can affect the reliability and consistent performance of the sensor. So for this reason, I highly recommend you check a Maxbotics guide which specifies all those factors that you have to consider before mounting this sensor in a tank. The step number two is how to install the ESP32 platform in the Arduino IDE. I'm not going to be covering this step by step, but if you have any doubt, you can reach out to the Web Help Center and find all the resources that you're going to need to install this board. Once the board is installed, you have to install the library required to be able to send data over MQTT. This library is called Poop Subclient Library, a common library in the Arduino community for MQTT protocol. To download the library, you can refer to the link, download link in the description below or from the reading guide, just press Poop Subclient. This link will redirect you to the GitHub repository of the library, so you just have to press clone and download, download as zip, and then you have to install it in your Arduino IDE. If you already don't know how to install libraries in the Arduino IDE, you can refer to the UBS Help Center where you can find all the resources that you need to know how to do it. Here, I already pre-built a code for you, so you just have to place this code into your Arduino IDE and assign the correct parameters, the web familiar of your Wi-Fi, the MQTT client name, and the UBDOTS token, which is the key of access to your UBDOTS account. Here, I'm going to refer to my 
Arduino IDE, and I'm going to assign my parameters. Here I assign the Wi-Fi SSID, then I assign my Wi-Fi password, then I have to assign the UIOTS token of my account, so for this I go to my UIOTS account, press the profile image, then upper credentials and copy the default token. I go back to Merdino IDE and place the UIOTS token. Now as MQTT client name, you have to assign a unique 8 to 12 ASCII streaming. So for this, I usually, I used to use this page which just generate you random ASCII based on your, your necessities. In this case, I just want to generate one string with a lot of 12 characters. And also I want to allow the following characters in my string, which is the uppercase letters and the lowercase letters. Then just press get a string and I will receive one string. Here I have it. And then I am going to place it as MQTT client name. Now that we have all the parameters already updated with our information, it's time to verify the code in order to check that everything is running properly in our Arduino ID. To verify the code, just press the verify button and wait for a couple of seconds until it finished. Once the verification process finished, you will receive a successful message at the bottom of your Arduino IDE. Now it's time to upload the code into the board. But first, go to tools and check that the board selected is the ESP32 and also check that the board assigned is the port to communicate with your board. Now that we have everything configured, it's time to upload the code in our board. Now that we received the DOM uploading message, it's time to open the serial monitor to verify the status of our device. So here, as you can see, our device is already transmitting data to UbiDots. And there you can see how the values are changing. Now, if I go to my UbiDots account and refer to the device section, I will see how a new device was created. Here, as you can see, we have the ESP32 device with a variable called distance. But the real value of our application is not in the distance variable, it's in the volume variable. So to be able to get the volume variable, we have to calculate some parameter with the distance variable in order to get the expected data. So for, to do this, let's go back to the reading guide and check the next step, which is analysis and management of data in UbiDots. So here we provide you some tips and tricks of how to make an easy bus scalable deployment and how to make pretty your application. So I, I recommend you check them out. So, but the, but the point here is how we're going to calculate that data, the distance variable. So for this, we're going to use a feature that we also offer to their users, which is called synthetic variables which is basically a variable that result of other computation of other variable within UbiDot. So in this case, we're going to apply the volume formula uh, with the characteristic of a specific tank. For testing purposes here, we choose a cylindrical tank as reference. So the formula is going to be pi multiplied radius squared multiplied by the heat of the cylindrical tank. So we have to subtract the distance values, which is the sensor reading, to the total height of the tank in order to get the expected result. So 
Taking as reference the dimension of the tank that I used for my test, I'm going to apply the formula into my account so you can see the result. So let's create the variable first. Here, press add variable, then synthetics, and assign the formula. Here I have it. So I'm going to remove the variable key and assign the variable that I want to compute in this variable. So let's find my device, which is called ESP32, and then let's assign the variable distance. As you can see here, the valid expression is on green, which means that everything in your formula is okay. So let's press a set and then assign a name to your variable. Once the variable is successfully created, you can enter to it and you will see how all the values are already computed for it. So here also you can add the unit for this variable. So let's add the unit for the variable. But let's let's say that I also want to be able to see my volume value, but in liters. So easy, just create another synthetics variable, which call your volume synthetics variable just created, and then divide it between 1000. Accept assign the name desired for the for, for the variable and then enter to it and assign the unit for the variable. Now that you have three variables that you can play with, it's time to go to the Ubidots dashboard in order to make this visualization pretty and in a way that you can take action based on this data. So just an example, I'm going to show you how to create, how to add one widget into your dashboard so you can see how is the process. So just go to the data section, then go to dashboard and here press add new widget. Here, I'm going to show you how the tank widget work. So here I'm going to add a variable, which is going to be the, the volume one. I'm going to assign a name for it, which is going to be tag volume. And also the minimum and maximum values. So now let's just create the widget. And here, as you can see, you can see how the, the tank widget is changing based on the distance detected by the sensor. But now it's your turn to play with all the widgets that will offer to their users in order to start creating the dashboard of your dreams. If you have any doubt or if you have any question, you can let us know by the comment section or also you can reach out to us in the UBDOTS community. I hope this video tutorial provides you a better understanding of how to configure a MaxBotic sensor with a ESP32 dev kit to transmit data to UBDOTS. If there is some topic that you want to learn about it, just let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to UBDOTS channel to get updates as they come. See you next time.